Welcome to This Week in Anime History, where we talk about all the anime that uh, anime events that happened this week in anime history. And today we're going to talk about the premiere of the first Ghost in the Shell movie in Japan, um, which was an adaptation, obviously, of the single volume uh, manga of the same name by... by um, uh, wow, I'm blanking on that. Um, but directed by Mamoru Oshii, um, who already had quite a reputation in Japan for doing um, uh, uh, thoughtful work, kind of experimental uh, anime, etc. And Ghost in the Shell was sort of this perfect storm of a lot of Oshii's um, desires and interests all coming together. It has um, uh, cool tech. It has... Uh, uh, questions about the nature of, of humanity and about reality and, and all these things and manages to combine um, a lot of exciting action set pieces or several exciting action, uh, action set pieces with some really ruminations on, on what, what's going on. It was a really, really big uh, uh, big deal, especially in America when it came out and, and in the West. It came out pretty quickly in the West, mainly because it was partially funded by manga entertainment. Uh, the American or the the the, the Western license, particularly the, their UK branch, they literally put money in for this adaptation when they heard it was going uh, 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 going out. Which is why there's a manga entertainment logo on this thing, and which is why that's where you find it because manga entertainment owns the Ghost in the Shell movie. Like that is a as a thing they 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 have. Um, uh, and granted, they've done a good job of keeping it in print and so forth and so on. But, uh, yeah, this is a really big deal um, uh, that uh, got uh, a lot of attention internationally. It, it uh, did the art house circuit uh, and got a lot, a lot of folks surprised for a, a film that was very much aimed at an older audience, very much aimed at adults, um, and included a lot of things. And was cyberpunk at a time when cyberpunk was... Um, still innovating, was still a new voice, was still a fresh voice in things, and asked a lot of things about uh, the ubiquity of technology, which, uh, boy, that's remained a question in our lives ever since. Um, and, yeah, um, it was sort of a, a really, really big deal. Also a big deal because it came along right when anime was booming in the West. And so it became this thing that a lot of... Uh, uh, it, it really created a lot of anime fans, frankly, in North America and so forth, because here was a thing aimed at that older audience that could now buy it, could now buy products and buy, buy material, and um, uh, really helped to found the North American anime market in, in its own small way. Really, really big deal. Um, and that's what happened this week in anime history.